Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate the accounts receivable and the allowance for doubtful accounts, T accounts, using just information from the financial statements of a company. And so let me share my screen with you and show you how you do that for an example company. So the example company we're going to use is Apache Corporation, which is an oil and gas company. And here's just an excerpt of their balance sheet. This balance sheet is in millions, and you can see it's just the current asset section of the balance sheet. And right here is the account we're interested in. Uh, it says receivables, net of allowance of 88 and 92. And the amount here of 1062, let me just say what that represents. 1062 is the amount that Apache expects to collect from customers who owe them money as of December 31st, 2019. So 1062 is what they expect to collect. That's the value of the asset. 88, which is the number over here, is the amount that is owed to Apache, but they don't expect to collect it. They expect those customers to be deadbeats and to default. So they don't expect to collect 88. And you know that the 88 is the first number, so it applies to the first column. And the 92 is the second number, so it applies to the second column here. So let's, let me just show you the T accounts that we're going to be recreating. First, the accounts receivable T account. Accounts receivable is an asset account, so it has a beginning balance of a debit. Then when companies record revenue on account, they credit revenue and debit accounts receivable. So that debit to accounts receivable is right here, revenue on account. When companies collect cash from customers, so customers eventually pay, they'll debit cash and credit accounts receivable. And so this is the credit to accounts receivable here for collections of cash from customers. And if they don't collect cash, what else can happen is that the customer can default. So those deadbeat uh, customers, we just, as we as the company, just write them off of our accounts receivable balance. And that just tells us, that takes them off of the list. This is the list of customers who owe us money. And it takes those customers off the list. So we can just stop calling them on the phone. They'll never pay us. So there's the accounts receivable T account. Now let me also show you the allowance for doubtful accounts T account. And this, the allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset account. So it in, its geography is in the asset section of the balance sheet, but uh, it, the exact opposite of an asset because it has a credit normal balance. You can see it's a beginning balance is a credit balance. Then when we need to increase the allowance, we need more allowance. Well, that's bad debt expense. So this journal entry here would be a, debt, a debit to bad debt expense and a credit to the allowance for doubtful accounts. And that's how we establish the allowance for doubtful accounts. Then we need to use the allowance for doubtful accounts when customers actually default. So that's a debit to the allowance. And the journal entry here is a debit to the allowance for doubtful accounts. And then the credit is actually right up here in accounts receivable. That's uh, a default or a write-off of an accounts receivable. And then finally, the ending balance for the allowance account is a credit balance because it's a contra asset. So we're going to fill out these two T accounts just using information from Apache's financial statements. And if you want to pause the video here and see if you can do it yourself before we go, go through it, that would be a good idea. But uh, otherwise, we'll just go through it now. So first, we'll start with what can we get from this balance sheet? Well, first, let's do the beginning balance of the accounts receivable account. And that's 1194 plus 92. So 1194 is right here in 2018. That's the beginning balance of the account. And that's the amount Apache expects to collect. But the accounts receivable balance includes everybody who owes the company money. So you need to take the amount that Apache expects to collect and then add 92, which is the amount that Apache does not expect to collect. So the 1194 plus the 92 is the total accounts receivable at the beginning of the year. So the end of 2018 is the beginning of the year 2019. And if you do this calculation, 1194 plus 92, you get 1286. 
okay, the ending balance is kind of a similar story. You take the 1062, which they expect to collect, and the 88, which they don't expect to collect, and you get total in what I would call this is gross accounts receivable of 1150. So that's the beginning and ending balance of accounts receivable. And we can also do the beginning and ending balance of the allowance for doubtful accounts, because that's right here. That's the 92 and the 88. So we'll fill that in. 92 is the beginning balance, and 88 is the ending balance. And that's all the information we have so far um, to be able to fill out these T accounts. So let's uh, see where we can get our next piece of information. And just to give you a hint of where we're going, we're going we're gonna to get some more information about this allowance for doubtful accounts. And here's where we'll get it from. So companies are required to give you details about their allowance for doubtful accounts. They're essentially required to give you the T account for this account. And it's uh, sometimes in a schedule that's actually called Schedule 2. And the title of the, uh, the uh, table sometimes is called Valuation and Qualifying Accounts. In the case of Apache, this table was actually provided, I believe, in their accounts receivable footnote, which is fine too. They just have to provide it somewhere. So let's take a look at this table that uh, Apache provides. It gives for each year, 2019, 18, and 17, the allowance for doubtful accounts at the beginning of the year, additional provisions for the year, uncollectible accounts written off, net of recoveries, and allowance for doubtful accounts at the end of the year. So this is the T account. So uh, the items here, additional provisions for the year, that's another word for bad debt expense. So this three, and it's three million, was a debit to bad debt expense on the income statement and a credit to the allowance account to establish the allowance account. So we'll move that three right over here into our allowance for doubtful accounts T account. Now the minus seven, that is using the allowance for doubtful accounts when we actually have customer defaults. So that seven million represents customer defaults during the year. So, and it's shown as a minus since Apache is not giving you a debit and credit T account, they're just giving you a list of numbers. But in our case, you know, every number in a T account is positive. So that defaults number is uh, seven in our T account. And you just check to make sure this makes sense. So for the, when, the, when you're done with the full T account, take 92 plus three and you'll get 95. And if you subtract seven, you'll get 88. So this uh, table here is accurate and it reconciles the beginning balance to the ending balance. Now, when we recorded seven here as write-offs to the allowance for doubtful accounts, it was a debit to that account for seven and it was a credit to the accounts receivable account up here. So we wrote those receivables off of the accounts receivable account. So we'll take seven as our defaults uh, in the accounts receivable T account. So that uh, really gave us quite a lot of information about the allowance. And then it started to help us complete the picture for the accounts receivable T account. Okay, next we'll move, next we'll, we'll get revenue on account. And we're gonna get revenue on account just straight from the income statement. So total revenue for the year ended December 31st, 2019 was 6315. So 6 billion, 315 million. And that was total revenues. Here's all the different categories of revenues that they had. Now I am comfortable putting that 6315 right here, revenue on account. Why am I comfortable with that? Well, first of all, let me tell you that Apache doesn't have any deferred revenue. I checked their balance sheet and I looked in the liability section and there isn't a deferred revenue account. So the only time this company recognizing, recognizes revenue is either when the customer pays cash right away or when the customer agrees to pay later and becomes an accounts receivable. And so let me just tell you two things. First, the oil and gas industry, customers don't typically pay right away. I mean, there's hardly an opportunity for a customer to walk up to this company and hand the company cash and then the company hands the customer uh, barrels of oil. So that's probably not happening. That's number one. The second point is, you know, many, many times uh, companies will record any type of sale as an account receivable. 
even if the payment is going to happen immediately, they'll record it as an accounts receivable and then they'll have a payoff of the accounts receivable. So that, you know, you can just assume that some companies are just doing that behind the scenes. And we'll assume Apache is doing that behind the scenes. So really revenue on account is equal to total revenue for um, Apache. So I'll plug in this 6315 into the revenue on account. And then, so now we're down to one unknown. We don't know how much cash we collected from customers. And that might be a metric you'd be interested in. How much cash did the company generate from selling its product to customers during the year? And that's the number, that's the only number we have left here. And so how are we gonna get that number? Well, we're gonna just um, solve for it. So this T account implies this equation. 1286 is the beginning balance plus this debit of 6315 minus collections, which is an unknown here, minus 7 uh, million of defaults equals the ending balance of 1150. So this is just an equation with one unknown, and you can solve for the answer, which is 6444. So 6444 must be what we should plug in for collections up here. And so that's it. We finally solved the answer. If the question is, how much cash did Apache collect from its customers during the year? The answer to that question is 6444. And that's how you convert financial statements into um, what the T accounts look like behind the scenes. Okay, so I'm, uh, I had a good time. I hope you did too, uh, making T accounts for the accounts receivable account. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.